viewers assalamu alaikum today we will be discussing active and passive dilation of people this concept is very important in ophthalmological uses and ophthalmological examination now having said that uh, this classical uh, what you can say uh, uh, diagram figure is of a human of human eye where this is iris you see and this has some radial muscle fibers lung this radial muscle fibers and these radial muscle fibers have what you can say alpha 1 receptors and there is circular uh, muscle fibers as well and these circular muscle fibers are supplied with uh, m2 receptors rather m3 receptors so they are supplied with m3 receptors and this is applied by the third oculomotor nerves now what happens uh, the iris contains radial muscle fibers which is supplied with alpha receptor as I said only and once these radial muscle fiber are contracted you see then 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 the pupil goes from every side so it goes it is retracted and then retraction of this pupil will lead to dilation of the pupil and this dilation this dilation is called as as ectodilation because norepinephrine comes and attach with alpha 1 receptors and then is going to release the calcium from the internal stores whereas in case of uh, m3 receptor there is a acetylcholine and this acetylcholine come and attach uh, with this so it give a vascular tone muscular this particular muscular tone to the circular muscle fibers and this circular muscle fibers then 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 maintain a structure so third nerve cranial nerve is going to supply this m3 receptors and before considering the passive dilation let me discuss something this is a, a classical m1 and m3 receptors supplied with seven team d mean transmembrane domains that have seven seven units here are two you can see two but this is three four five six and this one seven you see so this they are having seven TMDs when a neurotransmitter acetylcholine come and attach with this so it's going to mimic the GDP is converted to the alpha and beta monomers you see and then then it converts to GTP and this population of this GDP to GTP leads to the activation of phospholipase C enzyme and activation of this phospholipase C enzyme converts the phosphonesotides into anisotol triphosphate and diacylglycerol. Remember, diacylglycerol is going to activate the phosphokinase, the protein kinase enzyme, whereas anisotol triphosphate helps in the releasing of calcium from the internal stool. Consequently, it leads to the activation of protein kinases, and this leads to calcium-dependent protein kinase activity enhancement. As a result, as a result, the 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 muscle uh, would have its own tone must the muscle maintain its and its own tones therefore therefore what is important important is that if we bring here atropine atropine is a classical anticholinergic drugs so if you give atropine so what will happen atropine will dislodge this acetylcholine and dislodging this acetylcholine atropine will come sit here thus atropine will work as an antagonist of this process thus the, the, there will be no longer the tone of the smooth muscles of this circular smooth muscle consequently this will the people will dilate and once the people will dilate then then in the presence of atropine the m3 receptors the acetylcholine is taken off from the receptor sites and the antagonist atropine comes and sit with this therefore it will loses its vascular this this circular muscle tone and losing the circular muscle tone will lead to the expansion of the people that is called passive dilation so a question may be set in the paper what is active dilation and what is passive dilation passive dilation is through the atropine and active dilation through the endonergic agonist why these are these are used to the ophthalmologists dilate the people to get the ophthalmological examination of the either nerve or retinal damage properly the mechanism that we have already discussed now in summary uh, i have radial muscle fiber of the iris once it is sympathetic nervous system stimulation it 
to the alpha 1 receptors so it's going to produce contraction whereas circular muscle fibers are not innervated by the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system however however the the, the ciliary muscle fibers are supplied with beta receptors and stimulation of this will lead to the relaxation now uh, in case of parasympathetic region of the autonomic nervous system, the circular muscle fibers are supplied within three receptors, as I discussed in the previous slide. However, the ciliary muscle fibers are supplied through the M3 receptors, and this will lead to the contraction and meiosis. And in the presence of atropine, this will lead to relaxation, as I discussed in the previous slide. Thus, a question may be set in the paper that that, that radial muscle fiber contain parasympathetic receptor, this alpha-1 whereas the parasympathetic stimulation is going to, uh, to happen in the circular muscle fiber through the M3 on 2 or M1 receptors. So the answer is that is M3. And similarly, the ciliary muscle fiber has been supplied with the beta receptors and the M3 receptor. The question may be set in the paper as well like that which of the following uh, is supplied with both sympathetic and parasympathetic division of the nervous system that the, the answer is ciliary muscle is both supplied with sympathetic through the beta 1 receptor and 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 and, and parasympathetic through the m3 receptors yes radial muscle fibers has only innervation of the sympathetic division and there is no innervation of the parasympathetic divisions i hope this concept will understand you in, 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 in ophthalmological examination plus assessment. Thank you.